Once again, you got to get the labs run. I want to look at your organic acids, see what's going on there. Get a GI map stool test run. Are you on proton pump inhibitors? Are you taking supplemental acids and enzymes? How old are you? If you're above age 40, you probably have low acid, low enzymes, maybe gut infections too. So with a stool urine sample, good workup, you could probably resolve belching. I mean, that's a pretty easy yeah. one. And I strongly recommend do not get these labs on your own because just because you get a lab, you're not going to have any of the ability to know what to do next. And and that's, that's everything, right? You got to know what the plan is next. Uh, and then typically you want to look at, like when I order a lab, it's in conjunction with we've done A, B, C, D, E, F, and then now the lab is going to plug in at G. Does that make sense? So it's never just this is A or this is this is it. There's a whole bunch of sequence of things that we're doing before we get to all the data from the lab. And so when you work with someone, most people are going to have that plug in at some level in the clinical chain downstream. So most people think, oh, this is just it. This is A. This is the whole piece of the puzzle, and it's not. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head. I know that can be a little bit confusing when you're a layperson coming in there, but it's important information. I think just start off with a lot of the foundational things first. Just kind of wrap your head around it. Don't get kind of myopic in, in this tunnel vision. Oh, it has to be candida. It has to be this. Be very open-minded that it could be many different stressors and just have that really good differential kind of diagnosis list of all the things that we're going to go and hit and not get overly focused on one thing. Yeah, good point. I'll also say too, I'm not saying go to your doctor who's failed you for the last 10 years and try to ask them for an organic acids test or a stool test, because even if they were able to run it, which most of the time they don't have accounts set up with the lab, so they're not going to, but even if they were able to and they run it, they're not going to know how to interpret it. They're not going to know how to make a protocol based on it. So this is a shameless plug for you and I and what we do as functional medicine practitioners. Uh, we work clinically around the world with people. So uh, Terry's asking where can she get the labs from? It depends. Uh, we use a couple different companies. It depends on where you live, what you got going oh, we'll on. We'll do is this. We'll put some links in the videos below. So for you and on your site and mine. So if you want to get it from us, I recommend get it from us and then work with Evan or work with myself. We're here to help you. We'll put the links below or you can go to evanbrand.com for Evan or Dr. J here, justinhealth.com uh, for me. And then just to kind of highlight what you're saying, I see so many people that have some of these tests sometimes. And the first question is, walk me through what your doctor that ordered this test said about it. Did they give you a real thorough review? How much time? Oh, they just spent a minute. They just said X, Y, Z. And it really was. I'm like, wow, you know, you have all this information here and yet it really isn't thoroughly addressed. I would say 90 plus percent of the time. So it's really important when you get these tests ordered, you really want to comb through it thoroughly so you can extract as much actionable information as possible. And if your doctor doesn't have that level of, uh, skill set or information on it, that's fine. Just find someone else. Yeah, you make a great point. I mean, so many times I know you and I both have a section on our intake form where you can like attach previous labs. I'll see 5, 10, 15, 20 labs, and it'll be from a medical doctor or a chiropractic or some other uh, type of practitioner. I'm like, wow, they did a really good workup on you. Like, how did this go? Why, why are you coming to me? What, what was the protocol? Oh, they didn't have a protocol. I'm like, well, right, why'd they run the labs? Well, because I wanted them to. Okay, and what did they say about the labs? Oh, well, that it was not bad, but I could use a little improvement. And so they gave me an enzyme. And it's like, they gave you an enzyme. You've got 20 pathogens. You've got uh, parasites. You've got H. pylori. You've got major gut inflammation. And the sequencing of this is important too. So even if they read a cookie cutter protocol where it says like take oregano oil, you might not be a good candidate for that. If you've got a bunch of Correct. gut inflammation, your gut's irritated, you go throw a you know nuclear bomb in there, you're going to irritate your gut more. So the sequencing is important. So I guess just to highlight here what we're talking about, it's the sequencing, as you mentioned, when does the lab come in? That's not just the end-all, be-all tool. There's other strategies you've implemented up until that point. And then when do you work in the killers? Is it right out of the gate? Do you got to settle never. the gut first? <clears throat> it's do never, you, uh, yeah. I it's mean, It's never. The problem is people have done, the patients come in and they've done a lot of different things. So like maybe they've tweaked their diet. And so they think, okay, I've made these diet changes, right? Whether it's enough or not is besides the point, but they think, okay, I've done these diet changes, check diet isn't part of the equation. So in their mind, they kind of check that off. So when they see another practitioner, they kind of have this half list of things in their mind they've checked off. And then they're like, okay, I've already worked on the diet stuff. Yep. I've already done some digestive support. So when then I lay out my plan, there's kind of like, well, oh, well, I'm not going to do this because I've already done some of this, or I'm not going to do that. It's like, no, it's like, if I give you a safe and the combination is six or seven numbers, 
you don't say, well, I've spawned number 33 on my other safe, therefore I don't have to do it this time around. It's like the combination has to be done in sequence together. The other analogy is cooking. If you want to crack the eggs after you bake the flour, well, that cake's going to be pretty nasty, okay? So it's kind of the same thing. It is a sequence, and just because someone has done something before in the past, one, it may not have been all the way there, but we still have to plug that sequence back into the overall flow of things. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I know and, both you're, of you're smiling, so it sounds like that's something that you deal with and hear a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just... You know, once you, it's, it's once so you much it. easier dealing with patients that have done nothing, that have no, um, no predisp predisposition to like what's next. They're like a blank slate because then you can kind of come in and there's zero resistance and you can work through your flow. When people have done a lot of things and they think they've done everything in that area, it's always hard because you kind of have to convince them to redo these things over again. That, that can be tough. Well, I'm just smiling because of the, the safe analogy. You know, you always kill it with the analogies. <laughs>